Happy New Year, everybody. Uh, I guess, you know, the, the main statement I'll start with is just, uh, you know, my heart goes out to, uh, to Chris Smith uh, from UCLA. And, and, and now that we're, you know, that we're obviously playing them tomorrow, just uh, feel for a guy that, uh, you know, the difficulty of this year and, and what he's meant to the, to the league uh, and, and, the, and the caliber of player he was and the competitor, uh, it's really sad to see uh, that injury, but uh, he's got a great work ethic and great character, so I'm sure he'll uh, he'll be back uh, real soon. So really uh, upsetting news to see that. Um, and then I'll open it now and, and leave it for, for any questions anyone has. Michelle, go ahead. Uh, Coach, obviously playing UCLA, the conference favorite, uh, right out of the box with not having played a game in a month and limited practices, not the ideal scenario. Uh, in which to kind of start out and be playing them off a layoff? Well, I think they, they you know, really have a good identity as a team, you know, UCLA, and uh, they reflect uh, the personality of, of their head coach. And uh, they're, uh, you know, I've watched uh, UCLA and I've watched Cincinnati where Coach Cronin was prior for years, and they have that same intensity about how they play. And you know, a real focus group uh, on rebounding and, and defending. And um, so they're, they're going to present a, a very big challenge. Uh, you know, guys that stand out on film is, you know, Tyler uh, Campbell, uh, obviously Tiger Campbell and his is uh, the job that he's done uh, with his assist totals and running their team and his durability. And he plays heavy minutes and uh, does great job really leading that team. And then you know, Vasquez is another guy that when you're watching them, he's just making all kinds of winning plays. Uh, he's really emerging as, you know, one of the better young players in the league. So, uh, you know, they have some very good talent. They're well coached and they're a storied program. Uh, and we haven't played in a while. So the guys are uh, excited to get back out on the floor. Jordan and then Trevor. Yeah, sort of feeding off that, Coach, do you think, obviously everyone knew coming in, issues would arise eventually. But do you think now your team maybe has a better understanding, maybe a better appreciation for how it's going to go and they're more willing to just roll with the punches the rest of the way? Well, we, we knew coming in it would be complex and, and there would be adversity and, and uh, very challenging times. And uh, so, you know, this was our turn to, to get a dose of it, you know, the last couple of weeks. And you know, we started out the season completely healthy and we've only had two games where we've been at that, uh, you know, where we've had our full team available. So um, be nice to get to that point uh, where, where uh, you know, where we were that first, uh, you know, to start the season in Connecticut and uh, hopefully we'll get there soon. Trevor, then Kent. Uh, Bobby, you mentioned that U UCLA and USC have three of the better rebounders in the conference. And then as teams, they rate pretty high in that metric. Just what are the challenges associated with their personnel and the styles that those teams present? Uh, yeah, definitely. And, uh, you know, with, with Hill and uh, Cody Riley, you know, they have, uh, you know, two big physical interior players, UCLA does. Um, we were obviously, you know, thinking about USC, you know, after Thursday, but but you're right, just the size and and their ability to rebound and, and, and defend um, are, are all things. And, and we've been focusing on rebounding and we know it's been an issue in some of our losses. So it's something on the practice floor, you know, the last couple of days that we've been really dialing into, you know, understanding that, you know, we have teams coming in that, that are focused on, on that area and, and are very good at it. Kent and then Cameron Cox. Yeah, Bobby, with the uh, NCAA settling that the tournament's going to be in Indianapolis, and but looking ahead to that point, are you hopeful, pessimistic, or what do you think the next two months are going to look like that, that college basketball can get to that point? Well, I think it's going to be more of the same until the, the vaccine really gets gets rolled out and, and, and is in the, the greater majority of the population. And uh, you're going to see that the games are postponed and you know, it's not only in the Pac-12, but it's it's across the whole landscape of college basketball on a daily basis. There are games that are just you're popping up that you anticipated were going to be played that that don't get played. You know, for uh, for a variety of uh, reasons related to COVID. So I think it's going to be more of the same. But I, I do think we're at a point where 
there's a lot of momentum to keep pushing forward. And, um, and it's, I, I think with the NCAA, you know, being pro proactive on announcing that it, it even gives you more of a reason to know that there will be an NCAA tournament this year. Hey, Bobby, hope everything's going well. Thank you, um, just how tough has this last month been on you personally? And, you know, how tough has it been on the guys? Um, and, you know, the football team went through the same thing, similar. I mean, did you and Herm kind of talk about how to navigate that kind of type of type of time off? Well, I mean, I think the most that I've done, really, we, we shared some uh, some comments, myself and Charlie on, on a head coach's call, just talking about, you know, our situation up at Cal. And then and then the last couple of weeks, what we've gone through just to give give our other head coaches here some some preparation for what might be in front of them as as they start their seasons and get back. Um, but I, I, I feel, a, you know, still a great appreciation for the ability to be able to go to work, to practice, to train these guys, to have a chance to compete. And with all the obstacles and uh, the landmines that are out there, we're just, you know, we're just, I feel fortunate. You know, I'm, I have my health and, and my family does. And, and there's a lot of people that are in, in a lot worse shape than, than I am. So I'm, uh, I'm trying to stay positive. I have Doug Holler next and then Hode Rubino. Bobby, um, first of all, do you expect to have your full staff and full roster for Thursday's game? And also, when you haven't played in three weeks uh, and you missed a week of practice, what's a coach's biggest concern uh, going into that next game? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm still not 100% certain on, on my roster, and, and, I, and I'll be given you know, some more details on, on that tomorrow. Um, and, and as far as my staff goes, I'm pretty certain that, that Coach Berno has has been allowed to come back today, which uh, which will be great when we hit the practice floor here in a little bit, um, just to have his presence back in practice. Um, the other uh, the other part of the question, I think I was focused more on conditioning. I just could tell, you know, Monday and Tuesday that the guys were pretty winded, so we we wanted to get a lot of running in and. Uh, and then we, 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 we ramped up the live segments of practice yesterday. I didn't want to do as much live on Monday. I wanted to give the guys a chance after a seven day break to, you know, like I said, just, just work on that conditioning element. And then today we'll be, we'll be more execution oriented and, and game plan driven for tomorrow. Hode and then Trevor Booth. Hey Bobby, I know you just talked a second ago about the guys uh, maybe being uh, uh, um, winded and whatnot because of conditioning, which is 100% understandable. But at the same time, do you feel there's a lot of pent up energy that you may have to channel, especially in that first game against uh, UCLA, and maybe make sure that the uh, emotion doesn't take over the passion when it comes to the play on the floor? Yeah, I, I just think I'm I'm a little more concerned. Just again, losing that time is, is just opportunity to uh, to be cohesive, uh, not having the normal amount of reps under your belt that, that you would have. And um, so I'm, I'm more concerned about that than necessarily than um, than being overexcited to play. I think it's, you know, it's a big game. You know, we're undefeated in the conference. So are they. And, um, you know, they're obviously were projected to be one of the best teams in the league. And and, uh, you know, we're hopeful that we could get back on track. So you know, those are the kind of things I'm thinking about. Trevor, you're up. Uh, Bobby, you talked a little bit about Tiger Campbell. Obviously, last year had the knee brace to start the year coming back from the injury. Um, but just looking at this year, too, and from a former point guard's perspective, what stands out about how he paces their offense um, and gets them in position to do things? Yeah, I mean, he just has got great feel for the game and, uh, you know, got a good understanding of where his players are and, 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 and his ability to find them. And, you know, it's hard to rattle him. Um, and, and, you know, I think last year we, we felt like, you know, we, we needed to try and pressure him, try and get the ball out of his hands. And, and I thought he, you know, he was up for that challenge, really did a good job of running their team. And he's a little bit more offensive minded this year. I think he's looking, you know, looking to score it uh, in, in his spots, but also, again, doing a great job of running their team. We'll go uh, Ben from the LA Times and then Cam Cox. Mick Cronin talked a lot yesterday about your ability to spread the floor with shooters. 
and make things difficult. We saw that a lot last year in the game down there. Um, in the games that uh, you haven't gone your way this season, how have teams uh, been able to kind of counteract that and, and, and not you guys not have the success you want to do in that? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, our last game, it was, was our worst shooting performance of the season. You know, we were one for 18 from three. So, uh, and that was a long time ago. So uh, a few weeks ago, but, uh, you know, we need to, we, we need to make shots. I think, uh, you know, our roster is built with, with guys that can penetrate and then, uh, and then guys that could, you know, hit the three. And I think, uh, you know, getting a guy like Marcus Bagley back, uh, you know, into the lineup is, is going to help in that regard. So, um, Certainly, we're excited about that. Just for somebody who hasn't seen you guys this year, just look at the stats. Remy, 27.6% from three. Uh, what do you see there? And what does he need to do to get going there? I think I think Remy's been focused on, you know, getting his teammates involved. Hasn't been quite as aggressive as I want him to be. And, and you know, we've talked about that. And I think that he'll make those adjustments. Uh, you know, it's a small sample size too. You know, we've only played seven games. So I think those numbers will, will balance themselves out over time. Hey, Bobby, how did you pass the time when, you, when you're not playing and you, you can't practice? Just how did you personally um, get through this month? Well, I mean, just watch a lot of film, kind of, you know, watch our, our games that we played this year and uh, did a little more evaluation of, of what we need to do better. Um, and then just watch a lot of basketball. And, you know, it also coincided with, uh, you know, with Christmas and the new year. So spend time with my family and, and those kinds of things. All right. Any more questions? I think we're good. Excellent. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you guys. The uh, Thanks, team coach. can hang on. We'll, we'll pick it up here. Doug, do you have one more question, Doug Holler? Yeah, real quick, Bobby. Um, after the UTEP game, and I know that was a long time ago, you kind of suggested that there might be lineup changes coming up. Um, is that still a possibility, or do you still in, expect to go with the same group for most of the game? Doug, I'm going to leave you uh, a, a little. Uh, what is it called? A, a cliff, uh, a nail biter, or uh, uh, until tomorrow? You, you'll you'll see changes. Uh, I'm almost certain. Um, uh, but but I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about that today. But you'll see it real soon, within like 24 hours. You'll hear about it. All right? We're going to have trouble sleeping tonight, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.